Chris here, and I'm taking a look at another Innocent brand of monitor. I've reviewed now quite a few of them in the past, and they've surprised me, pretty much all of them. Will this one be another surprise? Well, we have a panel that's looking like it's got a lot of promise, certainly for people out there looking for a 4K 27-inch monitor. So it is Visa certified for HDR 1000. 1000 nits peak brightness is their claim. 99% Adobe RGB is another one of their claims. So it is a IPS mini LED setup here with the tech and it's 4K 60 hertz only. So it's not a high refresh rate 4K 60, of course, just being a standard there. So not really aimed at gamers, but it does have some RGB on the back of it. If you're into that, you can actually turn it off too. The monitor does have some other features you don't normally see. And that is an ambient light sensor, a accelerometer. So when you rotate the screen around, it will automatically flip the screen over. It's going to know to do that. And it does have a type C input, which does support power delivery up to 90 watts. So if it just, one cable, you can just power everything, which is very convenient, and have, of course, display out. It does have two HDMI 2.0 ports, which are 4K60, and display port 1.4, audio jack, and even built-in speakers. Included with the monitor, which, by the way, was really well packaged, we have our power supply. Now, it is 180 watts external power supply. This is a good thing. If the power supply fails, you're not going to end up losing the whole monitor. You simply just need to replace that and we've got a type c to type c cable now it does support up to 90 watts output for your type c devices which is excellent it's going to keep them charged and topped up we have our power cable for the power supply of course a hdmi cable and a display port cable and then a factory calibration report very good to see this so they've calibrated there you can see all the information about that calibration for adobe rgb and also for sRGB, and those are the results. So with all professional monitors, they do normally include information like that. We have a support card, and finally, a user manual there for the 4K mini LED monitor. So the stand base, this simply just hooks into the stand, and you see it's got rubber feet on the bottom of it, and that screws into place. So you don't need tools to assemble it. It is a metal frame, the inner part of it, and then they've used this painted silver plastic. Now, I wish it was actually a matte black color. I would have preferred that and that stands. The so same thing, the internals are metal, but it has the plastic on the outside of it. Now there's a gap right here for cable management. You can feed the cables through that for say your keyboard, your mouse, and it then just simply clips into the back of the monitor like so. Then on the right hand side we have our controls here for the on-screen display menu. So the power button it has a status LED built in within it and then four other buttons. They are made out of plastic but they feel alright. Even though this 4K monitor is only 60 Hz, I wouldn't classify it as a gaming monitor. It certainly has the look of one of course with these RGB lights on the back. So you're able to set different options like just a static continual light, you can put it onto a breathe mode, pulsing, change the colors, it's a full RGB there and you can see that it's in the middle portion there with the plastics that are painted silver and then in each of the corners. So you can turn it off in the settings if you don't like it, which will be certainly what I'll be doing here. I'm not fond of having RGB lights, especially on monitors. The frame around the outside of the monitor is plastic, yet again that same silver. Now it looks okay, it feels maybe a little cheap, However, there are a lot of vents on the sides and the top and the bottom to keep the monitor internals cool. So the screen can be run in a landscape mode. It does have a built-in accelerometer, which is also known as a gravity sensor, along with that ambient light sensor. So it can spin around either way. You can spin it, as you can see, like so. It should swap over the image now. Just give it a few seconds. There we go, it's swapped over now. And you can also rotate it that way too. So it is in the highest position, which is needed to flip it around into the portrait mode. That is the lowest position right there. The screen can be angled up. It's about 10 degrees or so, and then angled down around about five degrees, uh, a little bit less there. And you can swivel it 45 left, 45 right. So you can get that perfect position for the monitor so you can look at it straight on without having to have a crooked neck or anything like that. 
The bezels on this monitor, as you can see, aren't too bad top, left, and right. The bottom bezel is a little bit thicker there. Venison branding on the bottom bezel there doesn't stand out too much. Now, if you were to be typing away, moving your desk a little, would the monitor shake around? Well, a tiny little bit here, but it's quite sturdy. The base, as you can see, it's wide, and I don't find it being really an issue. This 4K IPS mini LED monitor is using an anti-glare coating, so I'm really happy about this. I just think it's the best coating for monitors, especially if you're gonna be using this in a office environment, you have some lights on, you don't wanna be looking at reflections all day, that's gonna really tire out your sight. Now in the corners, you'll notice that it is slightly dimmer. Now this is a trait of IPS screens that I see everywhere. You normally see the edges looking a little bit dimmer. There's also a gap between this anti-glare coating over the top of it and then the IPS panel below. It's not really that noticeable. And now with all the blinds closed, so there's no reflections interfering with the screen, is there any of the common IPS leakage? Now it's very hard to see it. There is a little bit coming through on the upper right hand side. It's very minimal and I'm only seeing it when displaying a completely black image like right now. And the blacks look really decent for an IPS panel. They're not OLED deep of course, but for IPS, I think they're excellent. Something that is not so common on monitors is an ambient light sensor. So great to see it on board. It can auto adjust the brightness of the screen according to the ambient light. You can completely disable it through the settings menu if you wanted to. So the monitor is IPS, mini LED, HDR1000 support, it is Visa certified. And with the 4K resolution, so that is 3840 by 2160, we've got a lot of screen real estate here, a lot of space to work with. Great for use like this, professional use. Maybe you're gonna be editing videos. It does look really good, and it's just the extra space it gives you. So great for multitasking as well, having things on the screen either side. Now looking at the screen, do we see any ghosting? Are there visible coronas? Are there problems like that? Well, doing the little UFO test here, I'm not really noticing anything. Now the maximum brightness does top out at 785 nits is what I'm measuring. Now it's meant to be able to do 1000. Yes, I do have the HDR mode enabled with the monitor and I've got HDR on at the moment too with my settings through Windows. So I'm not quite sure what is going on there with that brightness, but it still is really quite impressive. It's very bright for me. I've in fact got it turned down to just 25% at the moment. Now taking a look at the color coverage here, the gamut, Actually, just before I do, I'll just show you the calibration. So calibrated with my Spider X Pro, and then the factory calibration, you can see there's barely any difference. It's just the, the grays and the white balance is slightly different there. So I calibrate all my monitors. It's normal that it's gonna be out by a little bit compared to their own factory calibration. But very good here, when you take a look at the Adobe RGB is 83%. Now, I was expecting this to be a little bit higher, maybe around the 90s almost. NTSC is 79%, sRGB 100%, so that's their claim, it's in line with their claim there. And then P3 is 86%, which is very good, almost up to 90 there, which is great, that's what you want. Now just move this around really quickly, and I'm not seeing any ghosting. Mouse cursor, the pointer there, I'm not seeing any trailing, trailing pointers too as well with it, so it's good for that. Not a gaming screen really because it doesn't have G-Sync, it doesn't have FreeSync, it's only 60 hertz. Would have been nice if it was 120, but that probably would have pushed up the price tag. But it is a very nice panel. As for that on-screen menu, how are the controls? So when you first press home, it'll bring up the shortcuts here and that's directly below where the button is. So it doesn't make it too difficult. You can adjust the brightness on the fly. Now I tend to run a very low brightness actually of about 25 because I just can't seem to capture it properly if it's anything over that. It's a very bright monitor. Tapping home twice, you then bring up the whole menu as you can see now. So we've got our professional settings, it's called. That's where you can change the different color modes. You can put it into a DCI P3 mode, Adobe mode, sRGB, and a standard mode. Now it does time out after a little while as you can see. You can, I believe, adjust that too as well. We've got our picture settings right here that you'll see that you're able to adjust the brightness, contrast, uh, a few other tweaks there. So I have the HDR mode on enabled. I do want that. Game settings, again, even though this really isn't a gaming monitor, there's a couple of little options in here you might like. This is also where you can turn off those pesky 
uh, LED lights on the back, the RGB. If you don't like the RGB, it's just go into this, disable it, and it's off forever, which is good. Picture in picture, so if you do happen to have another source plugged in, you can then adjust and you get all of those options. So I don't have another uh, device plugged in like my PlayStation 5 or, or gaming laptop or anything else like that too. I'll just go into the last setting here, or well, the second to last, sorry, is our on-screen display setting. So there's the timeout, it's on 10 seconds. I should probably actually adjust that and then you'll find here other settings. So that's where you can set the input source to be auto, and I do like this one, auto power. That's probably one of the most handy things. So when you turn on your PC, or whatever you've got connected to it, it will automatically power on this monitor. Now what is the final verdict then of using this Innocent 4K 27 inch IPS mini LED HDR 1000 monitor, 1000 nits monitor, it's a bit of a mouthful. It is a very nice screen. I have enjoyed my time using it now for a few days as my main monitor. There's still plenty of room there that I can fit all of my video editing into it. And it's great for that, for the screen real estate. Text looks very sharp. I've noticed no problems with ghosting. If you do look at just a black image, and if you're into staring at black images all day, you might be a little bit annoyed with a tiny little bit of screen bleed you see on the outer edges. It's not actually that bad. Now it is not fully laminated, so this front anti-glare coating isn't actually optically bonded to the screen behind it. They might have done that to reduce the glare, it's probably actually a cost saving move, um, but it's not too bad, you do notice it a little bit when you just look at the very edges, but once you get used to that, it's you don't really notice at all that there's about a millimeter gap or so between those layers there. So the color gamut, the coverage, I did put it onto the Adobe RGB mode and I only managed to get into the 80s, not into the 99% RGB, which is their claim. Now, if it was in the 90s, I would have gone, okay, thumbs up, it's close enough to their claim. Um, and what I've seen with their previous monitors, they've always been pretty much spot on with their claim. If they've said that it has 99% uh, Adobe RGB, well, I got like almost that with some of their others. And okay, sRGB is 100%, that's not too hard to achieve. Uh, so it's a little disappointing there in that area. Now, maximum brightness is another one. In the HDR mode and running HDR, I can get 785 nits of top brightness. Now, it should be peaking at around 1000 nits, which is what it's capable of. It does, after all, have that Visa certified HDR 1000. Um, but I'm just simply not able to get those brightness levels with it. Now I did find the blacks, as I showed you in my example, that they actually look really good for an IPS screen. Of course, it's not an OLED level. That's impossible to achieve with this kind of tech, with this kind of panel here. Now if you do intend to game, it's not a gamer monitor. There's, there's no way that anyone's going to claim it is uh, because it doesn't have, for a start, G-Sync, FreeSync, uh, the response times and everything like that seem pretty standard. Uh, I don't actually know them, but they don't seem bad. But if you are a gamer, and especially into your competitive games, you're going to want something that's got a really high refresh rate, which, of course, this simply does not deliver. It is 60 hertz 4K. Now, for professional use, that is perfectly fine, okay? I think most people's desktops running at 60 4K still acceptable, right? I mean, I actually personally run 4K 120. But even gaming, 4K at 60 hertz is acceptable, it's fine, it's definitely doable on this, just not at a professional level. So all up, I can say with the ambient light sensor, the Type-C port with the 90 watts, very convenient. The options it does offer, it is an excellent monitor here, it's just falling short, at least my panel that I have in this unit, from their claims. That's really the only thing. And the other which is subjective, of course, is the design of it, the black, Sorry, I would have preferred it to be black, but the silver plastic on it, and then the RGB lighting, I'm not too fond of it. I would have liked more of a, a subdued professional kind of look, just matte black plastic would have been good, no LEDs, but of course you can turn them off, so it's not really that bad. So thank you so much for watching my review here of the Innocent 4K Mini LED Mini LED Monitor.